Welcome back to The Short Game, uh, a show where we talk about short video games, uh, the kind of games that you can finish in an evening or a weekend, uh, or occasionally longer games uh, that are special in some way, like you play them together with your very best it, I, friends, it's kind of awkward to say lovers. We're playing lovers in a dangerous <laughs> space time. Lovers optional, but someone you love in some way. Yeah, I mean, the, the title would have been even longer if they'd made it friends or someone you love in a dangerous space time. But, uh, well, I'm Shane, uh, and I'm joined this week by my two co-hosts, Laura Nash. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. And Mr. Nate Heinegger. How are you doing, uh, Mr. Nate? I'm doing well. Um... Panicked in a dangerous space time, but making my way through it. As we all are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a this is a game that induces a lot of panic, um, which uh, is kind of surprising uh, to me because it has such a adorable um, kind of lovey dovey uh, theming to it. It comes to us from developer Asteroid Base, uh, who are coming out of Toronto. Um, this is a game that I first heard about all the way back, I think, in 2014, although it came out at PAX in 2013 and won a whole bunch, a whole bunch of different awards. So Yeah, Extra Credits talked about it in 2014. I played it at BitBash, um, but I didn't understand what it was because it was kind of off by itself and I didn't realize it was co-op. So um, that was a bad experience because... <laughs> Because I just wandered over, tried the controls, and didn't understand anything, and just left. Uh, should have had some of that booth. <laughs> yeah, okay. this is a game that requires some explanation, which hopefully this podcast can help with. And it's a game that is widely available. Um, it's on every major console. It's on Steam. Um, it's been in Humble Bundles. Uh, it was in Humble Bundle number 17 with... With three alongside three games that this show already has professed its love for: Super Time Force Ultra, Octodad, uh, The Beginner's Guide, and it's an inexpensive game at coming in under twenty dollars, uh, fifteen bucks I think current price. So it's a it's a great game to dive into if you have an evening or a weekend with that special someone. <laughs> Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time is a uh, very unique special game um, that's played. Ideally, cooperatively with someone who is a good friend. And it is, would you describe it as a shooter, a platformer, or some kind of hybrid, guys? I would call it some kind of hybrid, mostly because you are collaboratively managing a spaceship, but not in a resource management type way. One person can grab, um, you know, the shooting controls. One person can grab the engine. Uh, There's too many things for two people to... Uh, cover everything at once. You're constantly moving around. But at the same time, um, it's very combative and very friendly. There's lots of love and lots of shooting. Let's talk about the about the theming and the sort of story of the game, because I want to kind of start there, because it's it, that's one place where it's unique. I think this game's unique in almost every way. But uh, the first place I thought it was unique, the name, Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time, uh, is a pretty... Uh, appealing name uh, because it sounds like a uh, space opera to me, and it sort of is. What what the story starts with is uh, that the universe is uh, kind of being kept at peace by an organization called Lovers. So in the at the very start of the game, um, this sort of uh, universal peacekeeping organization, Lovers, um, which I've got to find what this stands for. I'm, I'm going to get back to you guys on this. It's something like uh, organization of very empathetic spacers or something like that. Uh, but basically, they're space bunnies of love. And they're spacemen who keep the peace and... Uh, all of the galaxy is powered by love, 
uh, and they fight the forces of anti-love. And they have um, the ardor engine. Yes, the ardor reactor that is powering everything. And uh, they, uh, they're they attacked by the forces of anti-love. And the no! the their heart-shaped uh, space base is shattered. Um, and uh, a couple of very special lovers have to uh, take over a experimental spaceship and go and, and save all the space bunnies uh, and fight the forces of anti-love. And uh, which... it is charming as hell on every single level. I mean, everywhere, uh, everywhere, like when you're where you would normally have a menu and you'd say like, okay, you know, like a tutorial box or something, mm-hmm. it just says yay with an exclamation point that you click uh, instead of okay. It's just, it, this thing is just Every opportunity they had to make something adorable or funny or cute or all three, they took it. And it's not in a, like, hokey, like, I don't know, it's 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 going to sound like a children's cartoon, the way we're describing it, but it's it's not really. Like, it, it's, it, it is sort of, but it's way funnier and it's way more stylized than that. It's super neon. I mean, I played with Shane the first time, and we were going through, and we're like, love, anti-love, cool, trying to track everything. And then we got in the game, we're like, pink is good, everything yep. else is bad, green <laughs> is bad, just pink is good. Stay on your hot, neon, super neon pink spaceship, shoot everything that's green. We got this. And it is, uh, we've been talking about how chill the theming is, but the game is not chill in the slightest. No, it no, is very indeed. frantic. It is... Um, I think someone called it colorful carnage. Yeah, the the aesthetic is like Hello Kitty, uh, but the gameplay is like a a bullet hell shooter, um, and your ship is gigantic. So the, the the thing about the gameplay here that I think is is unique it's not a it's a shooter in in uh, it's in the gr- the grand sense. You're piloting a ship through a level uh, to try and collect all the space bunnies and free them. And save their lives, um, but <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, the but every station in the ship um, is 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 played by is run what can one at a time by you running and jumping uh, with your little character around the inside of the ship to jump to different stations. So you might take over the engines in order to drive the ship. You might take over a gun in order to defend the ship or a shield in order to repel enemy shots. And um, at, at, when the game first came out, this was pretty much either a one or a two player ordeal. One player, I don't think is worth discussing that much because, you know, it, it, this game is made for that two player experience. I played one player, but it's, yeah, it, it's, it's a little lonely. You can play with an AI, but it's definitely made to be shared because half of this game is the couch experience. Yeah. And so uh, to kind of drive in a little bit more on the, the um, individual mechanics, like your, your first ship, uh, it's a circle and it's got a gun uh, on the top, the bottom, the left and the right. And there are uh, enemies. Inside of, of that circle, there's there's a sort of a maze of twisting passages mm-hmm that you run and jump to the different stations. Yeah, and you are surrounded by enemies uh, of all different types that shoot different weapons. Some of them ram you, some of them shoot you, some of them are just like big shields that block other ones. And inside is just you and your buddy, and the top gun can only hit the creatures that are kind of around the top. The right gun can only kind of get the creatures that are around the right. So it's frantically running from station to station, trying to protect yourself and cover the side, shooting uh, as quickly as possible. Um, it's hard to look at where your character is. It's hard to look at where all the enemies are. And you just have people yelling, Top Gun, which was, made me laugh every single time. <laughs> uh, left gun, bottom gun. Um, and and it is a little maze inside. And so sometimes you think you're getting to like far left gun, but you're actually, you didn't go down the ladder like you thought you went down the ladder. So your creature, your little guy, your adorable little um, lover bunny. is just like, yeah, Bunny is just running into a wall until I would like, oh, oops, hold on, go down the ladder, to the left, back up the ladder, and man the space gun. Well, I uh, manned at Bitbash the game Regular Human Basketball, which is like this game pushed 30 times further because it's teams and you not only have to control... Um, the movement, but you basically have to control every leg like Octodad. Mm. So 
this is comparatively easy because all you have to do when you get somewhere is press a go button. You kind of just move your um, uh, controller. Just It's really simple to control once you get there. The challenge is what you need to control when getting there. It's a lot of um, quick decisions, a lot of processing. Um, I just played the one-player mode this morning, and it was even harder because then you're controlling a little pet raccoon. Uh, two players hard in a different way because you have to communicate to the other person, especially if one person's just being the uh, navigator. I had a lot of trouble uh, flying because I would get distracted by things on the screen and bump into stuff <laughs> because I'd be too busy being like, oh, shooter, gun, go over there. And I would just ram my ship into an asteroid. Yeah, absolutely. Terrible. Navigation should, should is, navigate. is is the most important thing in this game, uh, I think. the Somebody... Uh, when I was playing, it had to be on the engines at all times, just because you this ship, although it is the size of a space uh, grapefruit uh, in the middle of your television, uh, you, you really have to be kind of juking and weaving through a tons of enemies and through narrow hallways. Yeah, um, Molly and I ended up kind of creating a system where I drove... And she manned the shields while traveling. And so um, if I had to weave and maybe ins- maybe I was about to ram a wall because I was avoiding creatures, she would be able to put the shield up. And we kind of had this. I would do drive and uh, super gun and one of the turrets. And she did shields and the turrets near the shields. And um, once we the would Yamato get... Yamato cannon. That yeah. was a, a confusing piece of kit in my opinion (laughs) once we would have these sort of like assignments we did considerably better but when we were just running around because if you're on a a station and somebody one of your uh your partner runs up and also goes to that station you get kicked out of it and they take it over um and if if you're not adorable there's a little there's a little fighting cloud yeah and there's so much going on on the screen that like my biggest difficulty a lot of times was knowing where my little creature in the ship was because I'm looking around so much at all the creatures, all the enemies around. So if I got kicked out of my uh, weapon, I would be like, why isn't the turret doing what I was doing? And I looked down like, oh, because, you know, I got kicked out of the turret because we weren't communicating or I kicked. uh, There's like a dramatic bomb uh, that you have to run away from. And I was panicked and like, I drive. So I ran to the engine (laughs) and... Uh, Molly had already gotten on it, and I didn't see that because I was just, like, trying to avoid the bomb. And I took over, and, like, because we had had momentum different than what I thought I was going to have taking over, ran it into a wall, and we blew up and died. (laughs) And so (laughs) it's, like, that communication uh, and that, like, just panic at so much going wrong. You guys remember um, Space Team, the, uh, the app? It's not exactly like that because Space Team like relies on miscommunication and like and uh, uh, like silliness of controls. But it reminded me a little bit of that where you're just like you're trying to handle a ship and there's a lot of things that need to be done at the same time. And you're both just like, you go left, I go right. No, I'm going right. No, you know, and just like yelling and like try coming up with weird, stupid names for the um, the things that are attacking you and trying to identify where they're coming from. Um, I had a blast with this game, and it is because of that insanity. Yeah, I play with someone who doesn't play games very often, but is the best communicator I've ever met. She is a savant uh, at making sure that people feel very comfortable and that they know what they're supposed to do and are empowered, and that she's also leading them. So working with her was like getting a hug. It was like, it was like, oh, that's great that like... You know, you, but she was very efficient. She managed to communicate like, oh, you're doing really well, but it'd be great if you actually didn't fly into other creatures. Thank you. <laughs> I imagine that like, were there a lot of moments where it was paused and you guys had like long discussions about the, um, the space the, battle you just had? <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of decompression, <laughs> yeah. a lot of tea. Uh, no, it was really fun because she, um, she was very good at the map and kind of guiding towards an area. I, I ended up doing a lot more of the shooting since, um, and it was just really entertaining to see how someone who doesn't play games, but is, uh, 
kind of an executive who plays <laughs> this game <laughs> because usually in games I would take the lead since I'm more experienced, but she was much better at kind of knowing where people should go. Interesting. It's very soothing. Yeah, I bet. That sounds like a uh, a very different approach that I think well, the other I time think we... we played with Shane and we were just yelling at each other and running yeah. the ship, which Top! was super fun too. Bottom! Top yeah. bottom! Shields! Um, shields! We're, we're dead. being attacked, which is not a good thing. That was your fault. In any case. It's like uh, whenever um, I'll play games like Battlefield or, or like Overwatch and I'll have friends nearby and they're like, there's a guy. <laughs> it's like, what does that yeah. mean? Mm. That's not helpful at all. Um, just yelling enemies was not yeah. a good thing for me to do. Sorry, Shane. Yes. We, <laughs> uh, right. Well, there is a little mini map. I'm just as guilty. Yeah. There's a uh, radar mini map on the screen that is incredibly helpful. You, it, it yeah, and, and there's also kind of a full map that you can bring up. And I thought that was kind of clever because they treat that just like another station that uh, one of the lovers can go and access. So uh, it's it's neat. One thing that's really cool about this game, um, and I think uh, pretty well handled, is that you're on a big map that you can explore totally, and random enemies will attack you, and there's little random uh, environmental issues, uh, things that can hurt you, but it's mostly actually focused around sort of like rescue events. Basically, there's uh, 10 bunnies that need to be saved on a map. You only technically need five to uh, complete the map, but we always would get all 10, because why not? Um, and you'll find them on the map. You'll hear them crying and yelling for help as you get closer to them. And they'll be, they're locked in these little cages. And the moment you shoot the cage, it sets off what I consider a little event. Basically, uh, alarms go off and a pre Monsters everywhere. Yeah, a, a defined attack happens. And it uh, ranges from just... Now there's a hundred of the small guys that you've been fighting. Uh, now there's this bomb that explodes and you have to get out of the place that you're in. Um, there'll be like boss monsters, bigger monsters that have shields and, you know, they have like power up weapons and you have to goad them into attacking you so that they'll open up their, uh, you know, you can get their uh, soft underbelly. Um, and, <laughs> it, and it allows you a little bit of, prep time because you you come up to a cage and you know okay things are about to happen so what we would usually do is like try to position ourselves, uh put the shield in a good spot man the guns where we think they're gonna uh spawn um and then trigger the event and and deal with it um yeah i did a lot of asteroid clearing before those things yeah i got just get everything out of the way exactly everything else and now we're okay to go to the event. But they do a good job of subverting expectations, too, because you, you'll you be like, oh, this this one, the way it's shaped, like, I'm pretty sure it's going to be, uh, you know, a, a, a sort of boss monster. So let me tuck myself into this corner, put up my shield so I'm pretty impenetrable and, and get ready. And then it's a bomb. And so now you've locked yourself in the corner and you have to, like, get out of there in 10 seconds. Um, so there's... There's, it's very the hard levels, to as you progress, uh, also all have some kind of unique twist that I think can affect these kinds of things. Like, there, there'll be um, – one of my favorites was uh, the level where they introduced uh, planets that you could kind of get into orbit around. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you'll have, you'll have to uh, defend one of these planets, you know, and, and you'll just sort of set yourself up in orbit uh, rather than kind of sitting still. And, and, and so that kind of thing further – kind of mixes it up. Uh, the game never feels stale uh, in, in in a way that I would kind of assume a game that kind of encourages you to kind of plop your big fat spaceship down somewhere and defend it might. Another thing they add to the already randomized levels is that you can then power up your weapons, but not in a conventional sense. It's not as if you choose from a menu exactly what weapons you'd like to stick into the slot. You get these gems 
and you can run around and attach them to your different stations, but you don't know what a metal gym was going to do to any of your stations. You just know that it, you have something called a metal gym, and little dotted lines suggest you can put it on a gun or on your cannon or on your engine, and you just pick something. Yeah, this is something where I think they made a really smart choice in um, keeping everything really just in the gameplay. Like, your little character, when you shoot, like, a one of these little question mark blocks and you get a gem, um, you you grab it and you physically go and you put it in one of the stations. And that made sense right away, the way they have it designed in. Like, And it doesn't have to pull you out into a menu to do your upgrades uh, in any way. Um, I don't know that this game actually has any menus. There's one upgrade menu, um, and it's at the end of a... Once you've rescued enough bunnies, you earn an upgrade unlock, but it's very simple. It's either uh, you choose to allow your turrets to have two gems, your shields have two gems, your generator to have two gems, or your cannon to have two gems. Uh, And then you, way later, uh, you can unlock new spaceship styles, which I think is really awesome. Um, But for the most part, all of the game is handled in the game. Um, yes, and and what these gyms do is completely absurd, and I am on board, because the first thing I did was stick a metal gym onto a turret and a giant medieval flail stuck out and started just swinging. Yeah. Nice. And, and I just couldn't stop laughing, which I, didn't help me with the game. But it was... It's amazing how silly it becomes but how predictable it is because when you start getting two gems you're like okay what does what did these two things combine i think it might make this a electric flail i think this might make it a disco laser party (laughs) just trying to guess what things might combine to be did you actually guess that it was going to be a disco laser party well, I know I saw in at pa- when I played at Bitbash, I did see someone have this like crazy laser gun yeah. where it was shooting in multiple directions and it was insane. And I did spend a huge amount of the time on the power ups trying to create that. Trying to recreate it. It is. It's awesome. I mean, you, you were kind of handing it at, at the beginning, but like you kind of expect like a space shooter. If I'm going to power up my weapon, it's going to be. Initially, it did 10 damage. Now it does 5 damage. Or, I'm sorry, 15 damage. Yeah, it's going to be a bigger gun. But uh, no, there's three types of gems there's uh, power, beam, and metal. Metal. And they don't always even necessarily make it better. They just, it makes it different. Um, And you kind of find your own play style, what you prefer. Um, And some of them are dependent on the situation. Like the. the Yamata gun, which is a super weapon that has a cooldown. Uh, there's one where you can add the metal gym to it. I think it's metal and power. It might have just been metal where it shoots out spinning discs that ricochet. And in most levels, you're kind of out in open space, and it, it's almost worthless because you just shoot out these like five discs, six, six discs, and they're gone. You just don't ever see them again. But in one of the maps... Uh, Almost all of the bunnies being rescued are in sort of tight, cramped caverns. And we would just let loose those discs, and it would clear the whole event without us even even necessarily firing a weapon, like firing the standard turrets. So it was it, – it's, it's, it's successful on multiple levels. The insanity, the, the, the creativity of like, yeah, now I have a medieval flail – um, the imagination part of it where you're trying to predict what these combinations might do, and then the utility of it where you're trying to you know, decide in the moment what's going to be the best combination for this set of circumstances. It adds a really nice puzzle element to a game that I did not expect any of that kind of strategy to be there. I knew communication strategy. I didn't expect weapon, weapon strategy here. Yeah. I think one of the things that this game reminded me of uh, was... Uh, so in that aspect, the combining of the powers is reminds me kind of of Gunstar Heroes, which is a game I love to go back to every few years. Dev um, that, so definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a killer game, um, and th- what this game kind of takes from there is the level of depth that you can get from just combining a few elements. So you're combining two gems and a particular station, 
But the number of different combinations from that with the different stations you have and so on, it has got to be really um, up there in terms of, and I, I haven't done the math, maybe I should, but uh, there's a lot of different power combinations here. The devs did a really good interview where they deep dove into the uh, how they did power-ups, and they said at the end of it that the only thing they didn't really think about is now if they want to add as um, upgrades to new releases a new gym, that they have to do 20 different... <laughs> Guns. redesigns yeah 20 different designs next time they add a gym mm. and they're like it's expensive but it makes the game it, it's a huge upgrade just having one new gym yeah yep. and you know you were talking about like communication strategy i mean even this is communication strategy because you are discussing with the person you're playing like well what do you think would be like what what gun do you like the most because the turrets are upgraded individually. Your top turret can be beam, which is like a rail gun, uh, but you could have the left turret have the medieval flail. So it's like, well, I can't cover the left turret as quickly, so maybe we do like an area effect one like the, the medieval flail, but the top one, that's the one I'm shooting the most, the most specific, so I want like the super-powered uh, rail gun because I can do the most damage right up front with that. Uh, and you can, you end up with this like, custom loadout of your ship that uh, by the end of the campaign the game is broken into like four campaigns is ideally really tailored to you and the person you're playing with and the uh, play styles that you guys have kind of created yeah, absolutely yeah uh, this is kind of where this game really surprised me because it's a combination of a bunch of different uh gameplay elements that you've seen in other games um but you know, so if you've certainly played space shooters, um, you've probably played space shooters with upgradable ships. You've probably played space shooters with, um, you know, maybe uh, wave combat and and mission style gameplay. But you've never played a space shooter that, and you might have even played a game like that that has co op. Frankly, but usually it's co op with another person in another ship. Uh, taking all of that and breaking it. Uh, controls wise like I, I do consider it kind of like a, a breaking of the controls to take those controls and divide them up and to never have enough people to man all the stations um, and handing it to you and your friend makes the game something unique and special that requires uh, communication as probably the, the cardinal virtue of this game which uh, I think makes it a, a uh, on its own makes it a unique experience. All the other stuff, the like careful balancing of all the uh, of all the power ups, uh, the great level design, the cute bunnies, the incredible music is is kind of icing on the cake at that point for me. I think the smartest thing that the devs did was make the controls simple because all of us have people in our lives who do not play games as much as we do, and the fact that they can love this game as much as we do is wonderful yep. the controls are not intimidating in the slightest the gameplay is hard because it is hard to balance what you want to do it's hard to decide what to do next but the execution is much simpler than that it's not a tricky game in anything that needs to be learned from raw game skills and that's super super smart of the devs yeah there's uh three inputs really there's your uh control your you can use d-pad or you can use uh control um your the joystick on the controller um and then there's jump for your little guy and there's activate uh for the station that you're at and that's it so anybody i mean that's you know nintendo level button uh yeah you know, amounts anybody um, who has who has a, a history with video games has probably played uh, like the most accessible genre, which is platformers. And to start from there and to build it into a space shooter in terms of controls, pretty cool. Especially for those new players. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, except for when you get into, I think it's the second world, where your ship starts rotating on the axis and what once was up is no longer up and what once was down is no longer down and you get super confused and ran into the wall and die and everybody dies which happened How to us. Avengers game. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, yeah. very hectic. Uh you mentioned uh the music and hopefully yes. we've been 
I'm sure we've had it going through this episode, but I just it needs its own time uh, for discussion because it's so good. It, it it really brings the tone and the adventure and the excitement of this game together. simultaneously hectic and like uh, fast paced and, and really, really um, energetic while also often uh, as adorable and joyful as you would want a game with this sort of color palette and tone to be. The music is done by Ryan Henwood. Hmm. All right. He's done an awesome job. Yeah. And you can buy the soundtrack and the B-sides too. Yeah, every. Uh, Do you have a favorite song, Nate? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know if I have a specific favorite one. I, I uh, there would be a lot of time though where we would just like float in space in kind of a downtime just to kind of listen to the to the background, listen to the music. Uh, and I've been listening to just the soundtrack itself. Um, but as far as favorites, it just kind of depends on what you're looking for. Every map, uh, every campaign has its own. Uh, song, its own um, piece, and they're all great in their own. To me, it really starts off strong with the very first track you hear in the opener. Space bunnies who are just, um, you know, caring for the world, caring for the universe, um, and it's all kind of, you know, the, the life is beautiful to the throbbing like electro pulse of the Ardor reactor, just sort of the heartbeat of the galaxy, mm-hmm. and uh, that that first track is super great. Yeah, it it's fantastic. All the music in this, the sound effects, the the everything. I mean, this is just another example of the things that we love in the games that we cover where they clearly thought about everything and everything was handled with care and everything was handled um, and tested. I know they made a big point out of the in that same interview uh, we were quoting before. They play tested the shit out of this game. There was never a point um, where I felt something didn't work right. When you die, you feel like it was your fault. Nothing ever feels unfair. Um, everything just is I, smooth. I disagree. Oh, yeah? <laughs> there were some places where it was a little unfair. Oh, there was man. just an insane number of enemies on the screen. Yeah. But you put yourself there. That's true. Yeah, I would... At the, the first tactic I had was to run away quickly, and then I didn't realize that the enemies would continue to chase you. They do. <laughs> um, you can get rid of it, but that's a lesson you learn on an early level, where running away and then getting shot by enemies, you can still take them. Later, that is not the case. That's why you add the beam uh, gym or the metal gym to your engine so that when you're running away, it's leaving behind it's, mines and it's killing the things that are behind you. It made me really happy. I, once I did that, I was feeling much better about our two-person team being able to escape and still cause damage. Yeah. It's the car that leaves the little, like jacks behind it to the cars <laughs> yeah. fly off. That's basically what our strategy was. That's exactly right. Uh, we had a uh, moment with the the second boss. It's like a um, big fish snake <laughs> um, that you have to fight. And we were just failing over and over. And we finally sat down. We're like, okay, what do we need to do to beat this? And we hashed out a strategy 
of who was controlling what and what we were doing, and we beat it almost flawlessly. Uh, and it was right. it was finally us just saying like, okay, I'm on um, engines, and I will keep us at this orbit. And when these mines happen, you'll move the shield to here, and we'll plow through the mines. You know, we were both trying to do different things basically. Um, and once we got on the same page, we were able to beat it. And that just like that was the prime example of how this game works. It's when you're not communicating and everyone's just trying their own thing, just, you know, run into random turrets without calling out what they're covering, moving the shield to protect a side when someone thought the shield was going to be protecting their side. Like, it's not going to work, and you find yourself in these terrible situations. And to kind of sum up the experience, I think this is one of the co-op games that lets you tell a really good story afterwards. Like, Pandemic, Dungeons & Dragons, the, the best co-op games to me, you get a little narrative of why it was so fun to play at the end. You get to say, you know, this is how we fought the boss together. You can have that conversation with anyone else who's played this game. You can relive it later. And that's what makes it Favorite a combos. Game really, Absolutely. Really great. I cannot recommend this game enough to anyone who has um, anyone that would play this game with them. As we've kind of already said, single player, it's not really the point. The developers have made it very well known that this game is meant to play uh, co-op. And actually, we should mention they... They've been asked because it's, you know, 2015, 2016, why isn't there online play? And they responded basically that they're very, very small developer team. They only have one actual full-time programmer, and they decided to focus their resources to make coach, uh, couch co-op as good and as seamless as possible and not they didn't have the resources to do online play like you would need it to. It reminds me of uh, – we heard the same answer from the people who made Towerfall uh, Ascension, mm -hmm. and that is 100% a, a respectable answer. Like, don't sacrifice something. Um, this game is too good, and I would hate to have seen them make it less so to you know, duct tape in an online play mode. Yeah, I, I'm, I agree with that, although I do regret it. I, I play a lot of games online, and, and I love online co-op. Mm -hmm. um, my online co-op time is a, is a lot freer than my couch co-op time. Yeah, so, and I think in a perfect world, this is like a, you know, this studio explodes with popularity because of this, and they're able to get the resources to create a, a very good online mode. And they've continued to build on the game, so maybe that is a possibility. Mm -hmm. uh, they did add in the four-player mode uh, relatively recently, this year, yeah. um, which is, uh, what, about a year after the release? Mm -hmm. They added this four-player? So they released in 2015, and this summer, they in June, they added three- and four-player mode. Uh, they called it double-date mode, which is adorable. So is adorable. I, I think they're going to keep maintaining. Online is so different than you know it's a completely different set of skills for a development team yep. I, I really hope they do but it's definitely not something if you have someone even someone who you think might enjoy this type of game who doesn't play invite them over to your house yeah you know, try it and you can always use remote play on ps4 or things like that um and if you are doing if you're playing on ps4 you can use remote play i don't know that xbox has the exact same feature but this game Available, again, on PlayStation 4, Xbox One. You can get a Steam download for PC, Mac, and Linux. So uh, whatever, your, whatever your hardware, you've got the equipment to play this game. Um, if you are playing on PC, though, I would suggest a couple of game pads. Uh, and it's available on all those platforms for about 15 bucks. So um, I think this is a game with the short game seal of approval. Um, and I think that's all we have to really say, right? Join us for our next episode, which is going to be a review of the, or a survey of the winners of this year's interactive fiction competition. Uh, we've done now two episodes on IF Comp for the year, which I think is unprecedented because there's an unprecedented number of participants and games in IF Comp. So I guarantee you that despite the fact that we've covered plenty of games in our first two episodes that some of the winners will be new games we haven't discussed so i'm really looking forward to that um and uh 
until next time, uh, you can follow the show uh, on Twitter at underscore short game, or you can visit us online to see our show notes and past episodes at theshortgame.net. I'm your host, Shane. You can find me on Twitter at 8BitShane. Nate, where can people find you? You can find me on Twitter at NateSTL. Awesome. And you should follow Nate. Uh, and Laura, where can people follow you on the Twitter? You can find me on Twitter at Laura J. Nash. I'm taking a little Twitter break, but I probably will be back on by the end of the month. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm mostly off Twitter for reasons that are unrelated to video games. Uh, but uh, once we all return triumphantly to Twitter, uh, you can follow all of our fabulous tweets. We're tweeting about birds. We're tweeting about friends. We're tweeting about things that make us happy. So yes. um, until next time, 